Let's proceed now to the most important part of our worship, which is uh, the study of God's Word. Do you have your Bibles with you? Okay. Pakita si mga Bibles. Okay. Again, every Christian must have a Bible. Okay. That's this is our. Ano yan? Sabi ano yung B I B L E? Basic instructions before leaving Earth. So this is our map, our guide as we live our life here on Earth. Okay. So kung wala tayong map, ano mga yare? Maliligaw. Kaya maraming kristyanong naliligaw dahil walang ano? Walang mapa ng buhay. Okay? So dapat meron tayong Bible. Okay? Uh, if you don't have one, um, let us know. We can get you a copy. Uh, meron pong Christian bookstore doon sa DECC. So just let us know. Uh, we'll get a copy for you of the Bible. Uh, it's good. If you don't have a copy, it's good to have uh, an emergency copy. Yung sa cellphone or sa, sa iPads nyo, yung sabi natin digital. Okay? Pero, uh, hindi yan, ano, pang emergency lang yan. Okay? Mas maganda kung meron tayong, ano, hard copy na ba? Kasi ito, nalulobat eh. Di ba? Ito, walang lobat-lobat, no? Although, nangyari lang dito, naalikabukan. Kasi nasa drawer palagi, naka-display. Okay, so uh, let's now uh, proceed to our study. And uh, we just finished our series on the, great command, the greatest commandment. And the challenge for us is to love the Lord our God with our all and above all. Sabi ng Panginoon, uh, when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So sa pag-aaral po natin, we said that we are to love God without hypocrisy, without hesitation, and not half-heartedly. Okay? Rather, we must love Him honestly, humbly, and fully. Or fully. And again, uh, we should be reminded that loving God should be our utmost priority in our Christian life and our, in our Christian service. As we expand the Lord's territory, dapat po hindi natin makakalimutan, ang pinaka-priority natin is yung relationship natin sa Panginoon. Again, I've, I've said that we can increase uh, as far as the kingdom is concerned, but if our intimacy with the king is not there, then that will be a problem. Because ang gusto ng Panginoon ay ang priority natin is yung ating love relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Okay, so, love God with your all and above all. Sabihin nyo nga ulit, Love God with our all and above all. Okay, that's uh, the greatest commandment and that should be our priority as believers. The second co- greatest commandment according to the Lord is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, the word neighbor does not just refer to the person next, uh, living beside next to your flat, right? But the word uh, neighbor refers to other people. Okay, it refers to our fellow believers in Christ and even those who are outside the fellowship. So the Lord Jesus Christ says that we are to love others in the same way that what? We love ourselves. And that's why this month our focus is on the Great Commission. And that is a part of the, great, the second greatest commandment, which is loving others. Okay, What is the Great Commission all about? Well, the Great Commission is all about what? Making disciples of all nations. And unless we love God and we love others, then we would not be able to make disciples of all nations. And there are two things that I would like to emphasize as we begin our series uh, this afternoon about making disciples and, and about in relation to our love for God. Number one, making disciples is a proof of our love for God. Okay? Making disciples is a proof of our It's a, it's a proof of our love for God. Okay? Uh, obeying the Great Commission is obeying the second greatest commandment, which is loving your neighbor as yourselves. Why? Because it focuses on what? Reaching the lost and making them disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why uh, they, they, we, we say that if you love God, you will eventually love others. It's hard to love God without loving others. They always go together. As a matter of fact, people who love God more will learn to love others more. If you're having a hard time loving others, then it means that you're having a hard time or you're having a problem with your love relationship with 
the Lord. So if you love God, you will love others. Amen? Amen? Okay. So our love for others is a practical manifestation of our love for God. Okay? And to love others means to love not just our fellow believers, but to love especially those who don't have Christ yet in their lives. Right? A, a passion for the souls of those who are lost. A heart for the lost. Okay? That's why obeying the greatest commandment results into obeying the great commission. Because if we love God, and we, we will love others, and if we love others without Christ, we would reach them for Christ and make them disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone said, Christianity without the living Christ is inevitable is inevitably Christianity without discipleship. And Christianity without discipleship is always Christianity without Christ. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Basta yun. Medyo <laughs> halo-halo, di ba? So, in other words, if we say we are a Christian, it means that we are followers of Christ. And if we follow Him, we love Him with our all and above all. And as we love Him, we follow Him, and we lead others to love Him and follow Him as well. That's why Christianity and Christ go together, go together, and discipleship. You cannot separate those things. Okay, so discipleship or making disciples is always a part of our Christian life, and must be a part of our Christian life. So if you're saying that you're a true Christian, you will love Christ and you will follow Christ. And as we know, that Christ's desire or command for us. Believers, is for us to make disciples of all nations. Amen? Are you a Christian? Amen? Para hindi ah. Are you sure you're a Christian? Uh, are you a follower of Christ? Are you a disciple maker? Ay. <laughs> amen, amen, ay. Okay. So, making disciples is a proof of our love for Christ. So as we... As we desire to love God more, expect that Christ would cause us to love others more. And once we love others more, the Spirit would move us to what? Be instruments so that they would also become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who will love Him and serve Him and who would make disciples as well. Okay? So, let us love God with our all and above all, and the Lord will push us to make disciples of all nations. Secondly, our love for God pushes us to make disciples. And the reason why we cannot separate our love for God from discipleship or disciple making is because it's our love for God that will push us to love others and reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Francis Chan. Again, ito naman si Francis Chan. Pinsan ni Jackie Chan. At kapatid ni Oki Kaba Chan. Okay. Um, he said, making disciples isn't about gathering pupils to listen to your teaching. The real focus is not on teaching people at all. The focus is on loving them. Jesus' call to make disciples includes teaching people to be obedient followers of Jesus. But the, the teaching is not the end goal. Ultimately, it's all about being faithful to God's call to love the people around you. It's about loving those people enough to help them see their need to love God and obey God. It's about bringing them to the Savior and allowing Him to set them free from the power of sin and death and transform them into loving followers of Jesus Christ. It's about glorifying God by obediently making disciples who will teach others to love God, to love and uh, obey God. So, discipleship or making disciples isn't just really about, you know, sharing some biblical lessons or teaching the discovering life or whatever material and then having that session. And then once you had that session, you would say, well, we had discipleship. Okay. Although that's part of it, because the Bible says we are to teach them, okay? And that's part of disciple making. But it's not just really about that. that. It's all about really loving, okay? Loving people. And it would be very hard for us to make disciples if we don't love people. 
right? That's why if we love God more, we would love others more, and that love will push us so that we would disciple them for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's really about sharing our life and about loving others. That's why it would be very hard for us to make disciples of all nations if we don't love God. Kaya ang priority pa rin natin ano, is yung love natin sa Panginoon. Babalik at babalik tayo doon. Okay? That will be the root of all things that we would do as Christians and as members of, of this church. Okay? So, that's why love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbors as yourself. Okay? Now, um, as we begin our series, uh, I would like to uh, focus our study on the passage, a very, the very common passage where we find the Great Commission in Matthew chapter number 28. So open your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 28. And as I've said earlier sa ating devotion, dapat kabisado natin lahat to. Okay? Particularly verses 19 to 20. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Okay? But let's start reading from verse number 16. And actually, we'll start our study here uh, in this series on verse number 16. <coughs> and I invite everyone to please stand as we read the Word of God. Let's read it responsively. I'll read verse 16. You'll answer in verse 17 and so on. And all together, we will read verse number 20. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Altogether, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you once again for this time that we can draw ourselves closer to you and learn more about you as we study your word. We pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds, and you would speak to us today and teach us, O oh God, uh, in a very personal way, and uh, may our hearts be changed by the power of your spirit and by the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. Now, let me just remind everyone, and I'm sure, siguro ilang beses yun ang narinig to, pero let me just point out that if you look at verses 19 to 20, the main verb or the command there is not go. Okay? The main command that we find in the Great Commission is none other than the words, make disciples. Okay? Make disciples. In other translations, they use the word teach, but uh, I, I, I think I, w I prefer using the term make disciples in verse number 19. It's, so the Great Commission is all about making disciples of all nations. And if you, jo if you studied with us in our Discovering Life, we studied about this in... Uh, week number four of DL2. So, it's a command that we can find here, and Jesus Christ is commanding us that we are to make disciples of all nations. If you look into the Greek, the mood of the verb is imperative. Pag sinabi mong imperative, ibig sabihin ay ano siya? Command siya. So, hin si Cristo dito, hindi siya nagre-request sa kanya mga disciples. And to us today, He is giving us a what? A command. And when the Lord gives a command, anong dapat natin gawin? Ano ulit? Ano po? Obey. Yan. Dapat tayong ano? Dapat tayong sumunod. Okay? So, uh, so when believers make disciples of all nations, we are actually obeying the Lord, the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tama? Tama? Okay. And when we obey the Lord Jesus Christ, it means that we love Him. Tama? Amen? Because sabi ng Panginoon, John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. That's why sabi natin, making disciples is a proof of our love for God. 
Because if we love God, we would obey Him. We want to please Him, right? And Jesus Christ said, I want you to make disciples of all nations. Okay. That's why we're not just making Filipino disciples, but our prayer, our prayer is to make disciples of all nations because that's the scope of God's command here in the Great Commission. So since disciple, making disciples or disciple making is a command from the Lord as followers of Jesus Christ, uh, we are to obey and make disciples of all nations. In other words, disciple making is not an option. Right? Disciple making is not an option for true believers or true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Minsan kasi, ang nangyayari sa church ay para ano? O sinong gusto? Sinong may desire? Na dapat lahat tayo ay ano? Involved in making disciples of all nations. Usually, we have the perspective that disciple-making is just for the pastors. It's just for the leaders or those who signed up for the soul winners or those who are involved in the evangelism and the discipleship ministry. Okay. That's a wrong perspective because if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then this is for you. This is for all of us. We Christ expects us that all of us would be involved in making disciples of all nations. Amen? So when we make disciples, we obey. Who wants to obey the Lord? Okay, lahat tayo dapat. Right? So starting from today, uh, we'll, that's our desire. We want to be obedient to the Great Commission as we love God more with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you were here during our anniversary, Ang um, prayer natin is that this year, as far as obeying the Great Commission is concerned, that we would multiply. Okay? We would not just add people to the church, but we would multiply. And that means we would, exp we would pray and teach and help all of us to reach at least one soul for Jesus Christ this year. Okay? Isa para sa Panginoon. Isa para kay Lord. Kaya ba yan? Amen? Okay. So that at the end of the year, we can say, Lord, thank you for giving me the privilege of obeying you and being a part of the Great Commission. Amen? Gusto nyo ba yan? Right? So that may reward tayo pagdating sa ano? Pagdating sa langit. Right? So, in our study, we'll try to look into some characteristics or attributes that we need to have as believers so that we'll be able to actually obey the Great Commission based on Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Okay? And I hope and pray na sana itong mga characteristics na to ay makita sa atin and makatulong sa atin para act, uh, magamit tayo ng Panginoon in making disciples of all nations. Now, what's the first characteristic that we can see in our passage? Well, the, the first characteristic that I would like for us to consider is the characteristic or the, the character of availability. Okay? We must be available. Are you available? Uh, yes, pastor, single and uh, <laughs> available. Anong lasting available to? Availability. Well, Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse number 16. It says there, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Okay, now we'll try to analyze this verse para mas maintindihan natin and we can have a better understanding of the Great Commission. Okay, may tatlong tayong bagay na titignan dito sa verse na to. Okay, usually, ang focus lagi ay dun sa verses 19 and 20, right? But before we go into that, Tignan natin ibang preceding verses because I think they tell us a lot of things and we can learn a lot of things from these verses. Okay? Now, there are three things that we can see here. Number one, let's look at the people mentioned in this verse. The verse says that there are what? How many disciples? Eleven. Okay? Bakit eleven na lang? Wala na si Judas. Bakit wala na si Judas? Todas na si Judas. Okay? Bakit wala na siya? Remember, after he, um, anong tawag doon? Betrayed Jesus and sold him, right? 
uh, anong ginawa niya? Nagbigti siya. He hanged himself, right? So, just before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, si Judas ay todas na. Okay? And this happened, if you look at Matthew chapter number 28, this ha- happened after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, wala na talaga si ano? Si, si Judas during this time. That's why it says there in verse number uh, 16 that the 11 disciples went to um, Galilee. Okay? Now, if you go to Acts chapter 1, verse 3, if you go to Acts chapter 1, verse 3, G- the Bible says that Jesus presented himself alive to his disciples after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during a period of how many days? 40 days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. So itong event dito sa Matthew chapter number 28 happened between okay, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ. And in between that is how many days? 40 days. Okay, sabi, sabi ng Bible. Why did he still uh, remain for 40 days? To show to his disciples to prove that he is alive and to give them final instructions. Okay? So itong Matthew chapter number 28, nangyari siya within that uh, time period. And they say that uh, this meeting happened um, right a few days before the ascension of Jesus Christ. Okay? If you would remember in our study of John chapter number 20 and 21, when the Lord tried to restore Peter, alala nyo, di ba? Um, yung, yung sabi niya, Peter, do you love me more than these? Right? Um, sabi doon sa isang, I think verse 14, chapter number 21, uh, Sabi, sabi ng salita ng Panginoon that it was the third time that Jesus met with His disciples. So, during that course of 40 days, Jesus showed Himself a couple of times to His disciples. Okay? Now, this meeting in Matthew chapter number 28, okay, this meeting in the mountain with His 11 disciples is not actually the first time. Okay? But para it's the second to the last of the meetings that he had with his disciples based on the records that we could find uh, in, in the scriptures. Okay? So, some say that this meeting in a mountain in Galilee um, is the second to the last meeting of Jesus Christ with his disciples. You can look into that in John chapter number 20 and Acts chapter number 1. The last meeting was in Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, according to John chapter number 20, Christ ushered them to Bethany at Mount of Olives. And dun, right before their eyes, Jesus ascended up into heaven. Okay. But this, this, this event that happened in Matthew chapter number 28 with his disciples... Okay, happened prior to his ascension, but close to Christ's ascension. Now, go to go to First Corinthians chapter number fifteen. If you go to First Corinthians chapter number fifteen, the Apostle Paul uh, mentions there a series of appearances that Jesus made with his disciples after his resurrection. Okay. If you look at verse number 5 to 7, Sabi the Apostle Paul John, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 5 to 7, And that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and then Paul said, the last one he appeared to, to me, okay. Now, if you look at verse number six, na bangit ni Apostle Paul that Jesus Christ appeared to how many? Five hundred brethren at one time, okay. Now, ang tanong is sa ang kaya kailang kaya nangyari yon, okay? Because if you look into the scriptures, ay parang wala tayong maikitang account na ganon that Jesus Christ appeared to 
more than, or sabi dito, about 500 uh, disciples at one time. Okay? Now, some Bible scholars suggest that the meeting here in Matthew chapter number 28 could have been the time when Jesus appeared not just to the 11 disciples, but also to that 500 brothers that Paul is mentioning in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? Now, if you remember, most of, the ministry, most of the time that Jesus spent during his earthly ministry was in Galilee. Tama? So if he spent most of his time during his earthly ministry sa Galilee, ibig sabihin, marami siyang ano? Naging followers doon sa, sa Galilee. Okay? And also, prior to this, Matthew 28, Jesus appeared to his apostles, his disciples, a couple of times already. And before this, he, was a, he already restored Peter and the other disciples. Natapos na yung nangyari sa si John chapter 21. Yung sabi na pa yun, Peter, do you love me more than this? So Peter was already restored and the other disciples. So when they were restored, Jesus' instruction to them was that meet me at that appointed place in Galilee. As a matter of fact, this instruction was given to them even prior to his death on the cross. May instruction na nang binigay ang Panginoon. Okay? So, um, we'll talk about the place later on. So, just imagine the 11 disciples, okay, nakita na nila ang Panginoon and some of the women also witnessed the Lord resurrected but the others have not really seen the Lord yet. And probably they have heard the news already. Uy, alam nyo ba si Jesus Christ buhay? Nakita namin siya. Okay? We're going to this appointed place on a mountain in Galilee to meet Him. And if, if you're a true disciple of Jesus Christ and you've heard that good news, what would you do? Oh, talaga? Sige, sama ako. Okay? So, that's why, probably, sabi nila, na itong nangyari sa Matthew chapter 28, hindi lang yung 11 disciples na na, ang naandun. Okay? But also the 500 other disciples who were eager and wanted to see if the news is true, that Jesus Christ really is alive. That's why, if you look at Matthew 28, and verse number 17, anong sabi niya? When they saw Him, they worshipped Him. Siyo nag-worship sa Panginoon? Sinong disciples? Yung alam nila na to, si Jesus yun. He is the resurrected Christ, right? Anong sabi? But some doubted. Sino yung nag-doubt? Yung hindi pa siya nakikita. And imagine 500 people. Okay? And probably Jesus Christ is na doon, hindi nila malapitan. Is that really Jesus Christ? Si Jesus Christ ba talaga yung niluluhuran nung nila Peter, ni James, and John? Siya ba talaga yun? Okay. That explains the verse. Verse 17. Sabi John, ano? When they saw him, they worship him, but some doubted. Naintindihan nyo na? Bakit yun yung verse? Okay, ba't yun sinabi sa verse? Okay? So, these were the people uh, involved uh, during this time. Now, secondly, let's look at the place. Mahalaga rin to. Because sabi dito, the place mentioned was in a mountain in Galilee. Uh, before, I thought that this happened sa Mount of Olives. Pero when we went to Israel, I realized that Mount of Olives is in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is about two and a half hours away from Galilee. Uh, we stayed in Tel Aviv, sa gitna. If you travel from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem, it would take about 45 to one hour uh, <coughs> na, na bus ride. Okay? From Tel Aviv to Galilee, mga about two hours siguro, mga ganun. So, if you'll travel, travel from Jerusalem to Galilee, 
Ay, ano, it would take you about two and a half hours. Okay? So, kung gusto yung ma-experience to first hand, sama kayo sa October sa ating, uh, September sa ating mission trip. Okay? So, it's not at Mount of Olives. Okay? Now, ang tanong, anong mountain to kaya na kung saan nangyari itong Great Commission? Well, some say it's the mountain of, the Mount of the Beatitudes. Okay? And we were able to visit that. I think may pictures dyan. Yan. I think that's um, Church of Peter. I, I, I forgot. Yung chapel na yan na tinayo. Okay? But dyan sa Mount of Beatitudes, you would see some, yung, yung Mount of Beatitudes, alam nyo yung, um, ano yan? Sermon on the Mount. Dyan nangyari yan. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, etc., etc. Kaya sa bawat, dyan sa area na yan, makakita kayo ng mga, ang tawag dyan, landmarks na ganyan, na, na kung saan yung verses ng Beatitudes na dyan. And that is along, that is on the side of the Sea of Galilee. So when you go to the side, sa likod niyan chapel, makikita mo yung Sea of Galilee. Okay? So, um, hindi siya sa Mount of Olives. Kasi Mount of Olives sa, sa Jerusalem. Pero ang nangyari ito sa, sa Galilee. <coughs> okay, so the event in Acts 1.8 happened in a different time. Okay? But probably close. Okay? From the event here in Matthew chapter number 28. Although these happened, these events happened after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? So if you go to uh, Matthew 26, verse 32, doon natin makikita na yung instruction ng Panginoon ay talagang imits sila sa appointed place sa Galilee. Okay? Uh, before Jesus Christ's resurrection, He gave that instruction in Matthew 26, verse 32. Sabi niya, But after I am raised up, I will go before you to where? Galilee. To Galilee. And then, when Jesus Christ resurrected, remember the women, Mary, went to the tomb and the angel said to, to, to Mary, he's no longer here. And if you look at chapter 28, verses 6 to 7, Sabi John, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold, he is going before you to where? Galilee. Okay, so it is an appointed place ng Panginoon that he would meet his disciples after his resurrection. Okay? So, hindi siya parang aksidente o, tara, sige, doon na lang. Tayo? Minsan kasi, ano, pag, pag nagkakayaan, saan tayo kain? Pahala na, kaysa, ikaw, ikaw, ikaw. Hindi ganun. Okay? Appointed place talaga yan ng Panginoon. That's where Jesus Christ met the 11 disciples and most probably the other 500 disciples. Now, we'll close with this. Okay? The purpose. Why did Jesus Christ meet His disciples after His resurrection? Okay? Or before, right before His ascension? Okay? Well, the Bible says that um, He has to give them specific instructions. But here in Matthew 28, He has a specific, um, specific task in mind that He would do with his disciples. Anong, anong task yun? He would what? Sa tingin nyo? He would what? Commission them. Kaya nga, great commission ang tawag dyan eh. Di ba? Ang gagawin ng Panginoon, kaya niya iipunin yun, kasi anong gagawin niya? Iko-commission niya. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng commission? Kapag nakabenta ka, Okay? Meron kang ano? Commission. Ano yung may isang na commission? Ah, hindi yun. Okay? According to the dictionary, the, the word commission uh, can be defined as a group of people entrusted by a government or other official body with what? Authority to do something. So that is why, the, the reason why it's called Great Commission is because Jesus Christ here is giving what? Ha? Huh? Authority to his disciples to do something. Ano yung something na yon? 
make disciples of all nations. That's why if you look at verse number 18, anong sinabi ng Panginoon? All authority is given unto me. In other words, he's saying his disciples, I have authority. Have you ever wondered why Jesus mentioned that before he gave the command in verse number 19? Well, he's saying, I have authority and now I'm giving you authority. And that passing of authority, that giving of authority to do something is a commissioning. Okay? Sabi niya, kaya ako kayo inipon, parang ganito ko, isipin niyo, kaya ako kayo inipon dahil malapit na akong ano. Uh, hindi na pumanaw. <laughs> malapit na akong bumalik sa aking ama. Pero bago yun, okay, I have all the authority under heaven and earth. It shows that He is really the Son of God. He is Christ, the Son of God. And I am giving that authority to you. And as I go, I give you authority to do something for me as my disciples. What is that? Sabi Jesus Christ sa kanyang mga disciples, I want you to make disciples of all nations. Nagets niya? Okay. So, the reason why the 11 disciples and the rest of the 500 most probably were commissioned by the Lord is because uh, they were there. They were present. They were available. And that's, ex that's the point that I would like to, 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 to emphasize to us this afternoon. The disciples were commissioned because they were available. The disciples were commissioned they experienced the commissioning, the transfer of authority from Jesus Christ to them to do something for Christ because they were there, available, right there where Jesus Christ asked them to be. Okay. Although, sabi ng, sabi ng Bible, yung, sa umpisa siguro, some doubted, but for sure, after that encounter with Jesus Christ Himself, all of the doubts disappeared. And all of them worshipped Jesus Christ, okay? And all of them were commissioned by Christ. And all of them left that place with that in mind. Christ has given me the authority. And Christ wants me to what? To make disciples of all nations. They were available. They met the Lord at the designate, designated place and designated time. And as a result, they had the privilege to see the risen Christ and experience His presence, His promise, his commissioning. Okay? And that's the point that I would like to leave to us this morning as we begin and as we desire to obey the Great Commission and make disciples of all nations. I think that disciple making begins with our availability. Disciple making begins with our availability. It initially starts with us being present, being available, being ready for the Lord. Sabi kanina, Dapat, hindi naman hinahalap ng Panginoon yung magagaling. Anong hin kailangan ng Panginoon? Willing. Okay? Pero rin, hindi, rin basta, hindi lang basta willing. Dapat ano? Available. Kasi kung willing ka nga, pero hindi ka naman available, at least willing. <laughs> okay, at least may willingness, di ba? Pero kung hindi na available, parang wala rin, wala rin ma-accomplish. Tama? So, um, the Lord uses those who are willing and available for His service. Someone said that the greatest ability is availability. The greatest ability is availability. Ray Steadman, according to Ray Steadman, God delights to use anyone, boy or girl, man or woman, nothing in between, okay, who makes himself what? available to Him. God will use you if you will make yourself what? Available to Him. Okay. So, if we say to the Lord, Lord, I am available and I want to make disciples of all nations, and you desire, and you make yourself available, then it means that God can use us uh, to be able to really make disciples. Pero, minsan kasi tayo mga instead of Making ourselves available, we are used to making what? 
excuses. Ano mga karaming kalimitang excuses natin? Ha? BG. No time. Ano pa? Uh, hindi ko kaya yan. Uh, hindi ako magaling magsalita. Parang si Moses, di ba? Tinawag ng Panginoon. Lord, baka hindi sila maniwala sa akin. Eh Lord, kilala nila ako eh. Baka ako anong sabihin nila tungkol sa akin, etc., etc. Right? Okay? Uh, so instead of mastering the art of making disciples, we master the art of making what? Excuses. Okay. Alibis. Minsan, maraming magaling doon. Ano? So, but remember, as believers, okay, dapat ano, we need to obey, right? And we need to make disciples. We have to remember that God is not looking for perfect or great people. Sabi ni Rick Warren, if God only used perfect people, what would happen? Nothing will get done. Bakit? Eh, wala namang perfect people eh. Tama? So, wala ka makikitang taong gagawa para sa'yo. So, kung walang gagawa, ano mangyari? Walang mangyayari. Alright? As a matter of fact, lagi natin in-emphasize, God uses what? Ordinary people. But God cannot use that ordinary person unless he or she becomes what? Available. Okay? Remember the feeding of the 5,000? Yung lesson natin with Pastor Ed Pao? Okay? Sino yung available? Yung bata. And ano yung binigay niya? Naging available? Yung pandikoko saka tilapia. Diba? Ilang pandikoko? Hindi, muna yun. Malaki-laki siguro. No? Ilang tinapay? Lima. Dalawang isda. Diba? And because those were available, ano nangyari? Ginamit yun ng Panginoon to feed more than 5,000 people. Right? And the same thing is true with us. Uh, we might not be good at something, we might not be great at something, but if we would make ourselves available for the Master's use, marami uh, pwedeng gawin ang Panginoon in us and through us. Okay? Remember this, great things happen when we make ourselves available for God's use. Great things happen when we make ourselves available for God's use. Huwag kayong matakot to... Uh, make yourself available for God. Don't hesitate nga, sabi natin last, last month. Sabi natin sa Panginoon, Lord, I'm here, I want, I'm willing, and I'm making myself available. Okay. Kaya ba natin yun? Uh, remember what Isaiah said to the Lord? Yung sabi ng Panginoon, Whom shall I send? Anong sagot ni Isaiah? Lord, here am I. Send him. <laughs> Yung ba yung sinabi ni Isaiah? Lord, here am I. Ano? Send me. And God is looking for modern day Isaiahs. Disciples of the Lord. Who would say, Lord, the Lord says, the harvest is what? Plentiful. But the laborers are few. God is looking for modern day Isaiahs. Who would say, Lord, here am I. Send me as a laborer to the harvest. I'm available. I'm willing and I am available. Okay. Now, will you make yourself available for the Lord's plan of making disciples of all nations? Amen? Amen. Can you ask the person beside you, are you available? <laughs> are you willing? Are you willing? yes, sunod. Are you available? Now, as we close, uh, medyo overtime tayo ngayon, okay? But, um, as we close, how do we make ourselves available ba? How, how can we say that we're available? Well, how do we make ourselves available? Well, John MacArthur has this comment, practical suggestion on how we make ourselves available, Okay. He says, I suppose at some point it is fair to say that fulfilling the mission, duty of your life to make disciples of other people begins with meeting the Lord at the appointed place, in the word, in prayer, and in the assembly of the redeemed. Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as some do as much, the more as you see the day approaching. 
you're never going to have any kind of impact on the world unless you're willing to set aside that designated time and place to be in the presence of the living Christ with his people in his word in communing prayer with him. So how do we make ourselves available? Well, by what? First of all, saan tayo mag Well, setting time for the Lord. Setting a specific time for us to meet the Lord personally and even corporately as a church. Maraming Christians ang willing, pero pagdating ng worship time, Friday, hindi ano, available. Of course, may mga reasonable, reasonable reasons. <laughs> okay? Work talaga, may work. Pero minsan, pag wala ng work, nasa labas, okay? Pero ano, Friday naman pala. Nasa Sandy Beach. <laughs> okay? O kaya, pag Monday, prayer meeting? Oo. Oh, yan naman si Pastor, prayer meeting na naman, no? Monday. Para maabot natin yung 30, para magpakain si Nino. Okay? Right? Personal quiet times natin. Prayer. Devotion. Right? How can we available for God's use if we cannot be available to spend a few moments Meditating on God's word and praying to the Lord. Iba? Mahirap. And actually, mahirap talaga because we would never be available because maraming mangyayari kapag, in, kapag kumaga, out of sync tayo sa Panginoon. Pero the moment we make ourselves available and make time for the Lord and spend time with the Lord, you would realize na parang minsan ano, yung dating medyo parang kulang ang oras mo, ay ano, medyo nagiging maayos na. Hindi ka na ngayon masungit kasi hindi mo na masyado iniisip yung mga problema mo, etc., etc. The Lord is giving you peace and joy in your heart because you're spending time with Him. Tama? May, may tinatama. Okay. It starts from there. We make ourselves available by what? Setting aside time for the Lord. Na parang sinabi, sasabi natin sa Lord, available ako. Ito, I will set aside some time for you. Okay? One of the things that we, sa EDM po, sa meeting namin, uh, one of the things that we agreed upon the, and the Lord has led us to is that we will make ourselves available every day at 5.30 a.m. to pray. Okay. We started that last Wednesday. Thursday morning, last, thir- last week, Thursday morning. And today is our eighth day. Okay. Uh, ninth day. Okay. So every day, 5.30 a.m., gigising kami. Okay. Mahirap kasi minsan, yung iba sanay na ano. 6, 6.30 matutulog. Iba naman, 6.30 magigi, ay, mag, matutulog. Iba magigising 6.30. Ano? Iba matutulog na 6.30 pa. So, minsan yung 5.30 medyo ano, sacrifice. Pero mas maganda yung talagang magbibigay ka ng effort para sa Panginoon. Iba? Na kung saan, papakita mo sa Panginoon, Lord, I'm available, I'm setting this time for you. Okay. And the challenge is, for us to what? Spend, you know, set aside a, a time for the Lord. Kaya nyo ba? 5.30 a.m. Kaya? <laughs> willing, willing. Ayan. Are you willing? Yes. Are you available? Next question. <laughs> ah, medyo ano, medyo sacrificio. Pero you know what? What's encouraging is that When we started doing that, medyo maraming, ano, maraming reactions din. Especially sa kaaway. Makikita mo kumikilos ang kaaway din. Pero, ang mas maganda is, nakikita namin kumilos din ang Panginoon. When we started doing that, we've seen some prayers answered by the Lord. Okay? 
And the Lord opening up what? Opportunities. Eh, sabi natin, we believe in prayer, di ba? Eh, kung yung iba nga, na pananampalataya, limang beses sa isang araw magpe-pray, nakaset yung time, ha? Di ba? Bago kayo pumunta dito, pag dumaan kayo sa ano, di ba, naglalabasan, available sila. They make themselves available at that time for, for their God. Tama? Eh, sabi natin, we, have the, we serve the living and true God. Amen? Amen. Uh, pero, are we available? Willing naman ako, Pastor. But the question is, are we available? We cannot make disciples unless we make ourselves available for the Lord. And it starts with setting aside that time specifically for the Lord. So, kaya ba natin? 5.30 a.m.? Right. Try it. Okay? Wala namang mawawala eh. Tulog lang, konti lang yan. Madaling, medyo madaling bawiin yan. But the joy and the experience of seeing God answering our prayers, I believe it's worth it. Amen? Are you available? Will you be available? Amen. Okay? Are you ready to make disciples? Okay. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Panginoon, salamat po sa hapon na to. Um, we know that our time is limited, Panginoon, pero we thank you for um, allowing us to look into your word and see um, the principle of availability, Panginoon. Lord, we know that you are this, that the same authority that you gave to your disciples in Matthew 28 is the same authority that you're giving to us, Panginoon. You are commissioning us to the world to make disciples of all nations. But we cannot do that unless we are willing and available para magamit mo, Panginoon. And Lord, you know our hearts, you know our desires, Panginoon. We want to be obedient to you because we love you. But there might be some fears, there might be some hesitations, Panginoon. We pray that you would remove all of these things and replace it with faith, boldness, and courage so that we would prioritize you and our time with you and make ourselves available for you, Panginoon. Lord, I pray that you would, I pray that you would raise up in this church men and women who would be available for you. The first challenge is for us to really pray as a church, together. And the time that we're setting is 5.30, Panginoon. I pray that you would raise up more believers who would be waking up early in the morning, allotting, setting aside that time, and praying together so that we can see your power at work in us and through us. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa paalala ng ito. And dalangin namin na you would cause us to be available always for your glory and for your honor. Bless the truth in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.